Hey there Dev Squad, Virtus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 Mech Combat tutorial series. Within today's video we're going to be introducing you to how you can set up your whirlwind attack for your mech. So if you want to know what your whirlwind mech attack is going to look like, I am going to show you. So if you go within your mesh combat folder, uh, sorry, mech combat, meshes and then main main character folder, you have an animation in here called Whirlwind, and this is going to be one of the player's special attacks. He is going to spin around on one foot, swinging his hammer around. Whenever it hits an enemy with the hammer, it is going to deal damage. But the main difference from this attack to the one that we've already got in the game, this is going to be spinning all around him. So as part of this video, we're going to be setting up the animation and also the code to trigger that animation and get it to play. As for damaging the enemies, that is going to be something we'll be covering in another video as we need to differentiate it from the normal attack damage and we're going to be doing that once we've got all of our special attacks set up. So the difference as well as the previous default attack that we've got set up, this is going to require energy and as such we are going to have to put this into our code. But let's just go ahead and dive in and get started with this. So the first thing that we need to do is set up the code to trigger this special attack. Go into your blueprints, so go to third person BP, blueprints and then third person character. What we're going to be doing inside of here is creating an event. We're going to do this somewhere where we've got lots and lots of empty space. So just underneath my sprint here, I am going to create an event for right mouse button. And then with this, with the right, uh, with the right mouse button, what I'm going to be doing is first of all, checking to see whether or not they've got enough energy to use this attack. Now, this attack energy, if you're not familiar with it already, you can see in the bottom left hand corner of my screen here, I've got those blue bars in the bottom left. Now, with that, to activate a special attack, we are going to make it use that energy. So what I'm going to be doing is checking to see whether or not we've got enough of it. This whirlwind attack is going to be using three of those little bars. So what we're going to do from this right mouse button is run a branch check, like I've said, to check to see whether or not a float is greater than or equal to a value. So A is going to be your attack energy. And then we're just going to feed it in just like that. B is going to be free. B should be equal to the amount of energy that you want it to use for this attack. Now, what we also need to do is check to see whether or not they are already attacking. Now, at the moment, if we compile our game and press play, we can left click and it's going to play a default animation. We don't want it to try and trigger this whirlwind if they are already attacking. So what we're going to do is create another variable and we're going to give this the name already attacking. And with this, what we're going to be doing is getting the value of it. And then we're also, whoops, don't create a comment there, we're also going to create a branch node. So if they have got enough energy, we want to check to see if they're already attacking. And then if they are, do nothing. If they aren't already attacking, that's when we're going to tell it to play our animation and do what it needs to do. Now we need to set up this already attacking as part of the existing code that we've got here. So we need to find our default attack. So we've got is attacking, set that to true. So what I'm also going to do here, after it is default attacking, attacking, we are going to tell it to set already attacking to true. And then at the end, we are going to set this to untrue as well. Now it's going to look very similar to the code that you've got there already for the normal attack, but this is going to be something we'll be using for all of the different special attacks. So we've just got to add it there. So don't worry about that now if it confuses you, but that's what your default attack should look like. And then we can start implementing this into our whirlwind. So we don't want it trying to play two animations at once. So if already attacking is true, we want it to do nothing. If it isn't, then this is where we are going to take away 
the attack energy from the player. So set attack energy to float minus float. So we're going to get the original value and then we are going to take away free from that, which is the amount of energy it takes. And then once we've done that, we are then going to tell the engine to play the animation for the whirlwind. So we need to add a variable and we're going to give this the name whirlwind active and then drag it out, bring it in and set this to true. And also what we also need to do is make sure we set already attacking to true. So the engine knows not to try and play this animation twice. So this is going to get it to play the animation for Whirlwind once we've set up the animation blueprint correctly. What we also need it to do is stop once they release that right mouse, right mouse button. So what we're going to do is very, very simple. So from released, we are going to set Whirlwind active to untrue. And we're also going to tell the engine they finished attacking so they can do something else. So this is where already attacking also needs to be untrue. So if we hit compile on this, we should have no errors. So what we now need to do is to adjust our animation blueprint, telling it to play the whirlwind animation if the, anima uh, if the variable for whirlwind active is true. So go to your mech combat folder, go to meshes, main character, and in here you have got mech underscore animbp. Go ahead and open this up. From our idle and our walk run, we are going to be creating a new state. We are going to be giving this the name whirlwind. Within our whirlwind, all we're going to be doing is going to our asset browser and then getting our whirlwind spin and hook this up to the result on the final animation pose. Go ahead and hit compile. So what we now need to do is make sure we have got our transitional rules set up. So it's going to play the animations when it should and, and make sure it doesn't play them when it shouldn't. So what you should have is a transitional rule from idle to whirlwind and also from whirlwind back to idle. Do the same thing from walk run to whirlwind and then back again. So you should have the lines that look exactly like this. Make sure you check the position of the arrowheads there as well. So going from walk run to whirlwind, open this up. All we're going to be doing is getting our whirlwind variable. Now at the moment we don't have access to that. So what we need to do is head over to our event graph and then over where we've got as third person character, all we're going to do is get whirlwind active and simply drag it out and promote it to a variable and give us the name whirlwind active, just like that. So we can now use it as part of our transitional rules. Hit compile, go back to walk run to whirlwind and then in here, if whirlwind is active is true, then play it. Go back and then do the same thing going from idle to whirlwind. So if the whirlwind is active, go into that state. Hit compile and that should get rid of some of your errors. That's those errors that we've got down here or warnings rather are just telling us that we haven't set up those transitional rules. So now we've just got to go back and this is where we can sort of copy the code that we've got for the normal attack. But we're just going to write it again anyway, making sure you guys understand. So start off from whirlwind to idle. So if you open up that transitional rule, what we're going to be doing is checking to see if the speed is lower than 10. So get the speed and then we're going to do float is less than 10 and boolean whirlwind active is not true. So put a not in between this. So not boolean and chuck that into there and hit compile. That should get enough, rid of another one of your errors. Now there is quite a little bit of, little bit of code here and a little bit of logic. 
If you're having trouble with it, just copy it off the screen. What I'm also going to do is copy this and just paste it back into the walk run. So going from whirlwind to walk run, paste it in here as we're going to be using the same code. The only difference for this one is because we're moving to the walking state, we're going to be checking to see if the speed is greater than 10. So drag out from speed, get float greater than, and hook this up into your little and node here and set this to 10. Hit compile. And then if we go ahead and press play and right click, it should fire off the action. If it's not firing off the action, it is more than likely because you haven't got enough of that attack energy. Go into your third person character, go to attack energy, and set this to your maximum value, which is 12. Hit compile, hit play, and then if you hold down right click, you can see in the bottom left hand corner, it has taken away three of that energy of yours, and you are now spinning on the spot, moving around, and you are able to swing that hammer all around you. If you let go, it should stop, if you press it again, it'll take off three more energy, and that is our special attack all set up. So we've got a couple more of these little special attacks for you guys to look at, such as a leap and a wrist flick attack as well, but we'll be covering that as we go deeper into the series. Anyway guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Once again, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating. Your boy Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.